downstairs. Hello and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Hand Arts and Light Curiosity Club. We're your hosts this evening. I am Tobias and this is Will. Together we have a number of curious and exciting topics to share with you. As attendees of the Hand Arts and Light Curiosity Club, you're all now members, provided you with your door philosophy. Ex Curiositas Scientia. We pledge to learn without prejudice and pursue our mutual goals, perpetual novices. We admit that it is impossible to know everything about anything, and thus we remain. This is our flag and our mascot, Franklin, the lightning bolt. <clears throat> the lightning bolt represents the receipt of knowledge, the enlightenment of illumination, the resonance of truths understood. It awakens and excites us and makes us hungry for more. Curiosity Club is made merrier by our fellow artisans at Fort George Brewery in Astoria, Oregon. <laughs> Let's give a warm Curiosity Club welcome to Yohei Sato of Sato Children. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Yohei Sato, and I'm originally from Japan. I live in Portland last 13 years, and I sharpen knives for a living. So, who has a knife? And who has a knife here? Okay, you guys do. And who loves knives? Great, we're gonna nod out here. We're gonna geek heck out of about knives tonight. <laughs> awesome. So, um, so I sharpen knives. So how I sharpen knife is I use the um, Japanese style. So I use like West stones. Um, so I have like you know, a bunch of West stones from Japan. So it's all different grade of stones. Uh, I have 200, uh, 1,000, 8,000, 6,000, 3,000, 8,000. And then I have this like things, uh, it's all for cleaning metals. Um, I don't do massing. The reason I don't do massing is, so when you see people or like, you know, other, you know, like press or other some business like um, have like massing, uh, I don't do that because that's grinding. So that's not sharpening. What sharpening is giving edge on the metal, so it is, so when you grind it, so when like a knife get dull, so it get round. That's like you know that the blade, it get round. So you need to get this. So that's like really beginning process of uh, sharpening knife. But this is not really sharpening. This is more grinding. I need to make this shape on the metal. Then. So after this process, uh, I'm gonna use the West Stone. They're using the stone. Uh, so for this, for this, uh, I use this diamond file. So diamond file is really aggressive material. So it's great material if you know how to control this. But if you don't know, you can like really mess it up, braid. Like, it's great material. From here, uh, so let's say like uh, when I see knives or when I go into sharp knife, um, let me tell you the process of sharp knife then. So when I sh uh, see knives, uh, I need to touch their blade because uh, every knife is different. So how they made or what kind of angle or metal too. So I need to touch this metal. So it's more sharpening knife with more communicating or talking with metal. You have to get know this knife. So when you touch it, and then I can see like how um, being there you being used, uh, what kind of metals. Then um, so I'm going to through this like uh, process of like uh, getting to know about knives. Then from there. Uh, I'm going to throw stones. So the reason why I use like a bunch of west stone is uh, so when you sharpen knives, so let's imagine like so this is a knife. And then I'm going, so this is the braid. So let's say I'm using this stone. This is called binshu uh, stone. So it's around 
800 to 1,000 gray. So it has really uh, more colors, and also has really, uh, it's not really fine stone, but it's really grain. So it can give a uh, knife like really like this kind of effect. It's kind of scar. So that, so that I'm going to give them from uh, those 800,000. And then I use this after um, this using Vinci stone. This is like 3,000, so it's more fine. So it's more fine, like it's finer, so it's getting more, it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. And then from here, I'm going to use this like, oh, this is 6,000. So it's getting more finer, 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 finer. And then I use these things, uh, 8,000, and then here. So th that's what edge is. So I specialize this style to sharpen knives. So this is why I specialize, but let's say like, um, not every knife can be that sharp as, as a knife. I'm saying like, uh, Quality of knife can be really different, like what sharpness they can bring up. So what, so I'm talking, okay, let me tell you. Uh, good knife, people say that this is good knife. This is bad knife. So when you say good knife, uh, metals. Metal is really, really important part of being good knife. So people say like high carbon knife. When people say high carbon knife, uh, high carbon knife, they have lots of kind of like high carbon knife. Um, so when people say uh, metals, so let's, okay, I'm gonna talk about steel then, the metals. So basically, uh, steel is combination of iron and carbon. That is, uh, steel to make knives. But have like, you know, different things like, you know, magnesium, nickel, and other stuff in it. But mostly it's iron and carbon. So when make they process the steel to make knives, so they put nickel on the other stuff to include hardness or the resistance of, um, like rust, like you know, rustic, uh, like they do like, you know, improve the ability of the metals. And then, so let's say like, uh, I mean, if I talk about metals, it can be just like whole different like topics. Like if I talk about metals, I can go like, go like three hour, four hour, but let's not gonna do that. But I say just like, uh, but the stainless knife and high carbon knife. So this is the high carbon knife. So the reason why high carbon knife is great is, uh, what, I mean, sorry, why the high carbon knife is? Uh, so it's, it's the high carbon. So it has a lot of carbon in it. And then the making process have, you know, other stuff to make this knife. But, it's more like high carbon. So cheap knife, so cheap knife, those are like 10 bucks, so like, you know, $12 from stores. The reason that like, they're like um, cheap is because they have a lot of like aluminum, nickel, or like, you know, other stuff to make cheaper, um, more easier to deal with. Um, so like, you know, they, if you are like using like high carbon knife, does anybody have a high carbon knife? Yeah, so high carbon knife, it's get easy to, I mean, it's hard to deal with, is it? It's like you have to wash after you use, and then you have to dry it out. But it has like great ability, I mean, great potential as kitchen knife. It's uh, sharper, 
like I love high carbon knife, it's sharper and it can hold the sharpness really well. So it's great, great metals. Um, but like you do need to know how to maintenance it. And I do teach people like how to maintenance knife, how to like, you know, deal with knife too. But those stainless knife, like, it never lasts. It does last, but it's, you don't really need to do this. You know, have to like make sure like, you can just like put it in the water, still like, you know, not getting rusted, but it's not like a great quality because it's not high carbon stuff. And then, uh, let's say like, uh, does anybody heard of a Damascus knife? So yeah, so Damascus knife. So that Damascus knife is, actually like when people say like, or oh, some like store say Damascus knife, Damascus knife is actually not Damascus knife anymore. So Damascus knife is, that technique is disappeared. Um, so basically like you know, Damascus or the other style is the name of folded metals. And then so the Japanese, uh, they do, uh, there's a bunch of names for uh, folded metal called Sanmai. Sanmai is uh, really a basic style of um, Japanese knife. So basically, sun means three. Mai is three uh, papers. But there are three steel or you know, three steels like folded together to support each other. And then mosaic. Mosaic is also another uh, name of um, for the uh, steel. So then there's like, you know, all like different name of uh, for the steel. But people say like, you know, this is Damascus knife. It's great, like, you know, they, I mean, nowadays, they have a great blacksmith that create fantastic for the metals. Like it doesn't mean bad, but Damascus is not Damascus anymore. And I'm just saying that that's like just like a little bit knowledge of like Damascus. Then, okay. So the four fun. I'm just like you know just talking. I feel like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> like I mean, okay. So I have a bunch of knife. I want to do something like fun with like my knife. So, uh, so this is my kitchen knife. I sharpen knife uh, with my hand. So this is like what sharpen knife can do. Is so I have this like potato here. The like, potato, yeah. I can do like that. And then, you know, people say like tomato is really hard to chop, right? So you can just do it. So this is a sharp knife can do. You don't need to even cut it. You just need to like guide it. So guiding is like this. Now, uh, I'm going to a little bit have fun. <laughs> so I have this. So have you heard of like that fruit ninja? <laughs> you know the game? Okay. Can you okay, can you throw it to me? Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. There we go. Yeah. So like this. And I have watermelon, like, yeah. So that's sharp knife can do. Like, okay, I'm keep going this. Okay, I have pineapple. Yeah, I can just like slice that up like this. Okay, here we go. This is what I got. So I have fish <laughs> there. Oh. 
Oh, name it. Okay. I'm going to use this. Yeah. So this is like my sharp knife can do. This is like I can cut in like a bone tail. So that is like, you know, sharp knife can do, right? It's such a great feeling to have a sharp knife. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm the same as like, you know, I mean, I love knife. I'm such a like knife geek. And then like having like good knife, like make you like sexy, right? <laughs> yeah, like how do you feel? Like when you have like, okay, when you were like, you know, the outdoor or like, you know, going around and then just like, whoa, I have a badass knife. Like how do you feel? Just like make you cool and sexy. So like, I love this job. I mean, sorry. I really like like sharp knife. And like a knife is so great. You know, like I really, so like doing this, um, Knife is like accessory, like people, knife, okay. Like knife, after my life, if I die, this is gonna last next 200 years, 300 years. And then when I'm sharpening knife, it's such a great feeling, like somebody bring me like, this is from my great grandpa. Like this is from like somebody who's really important, not be able to use this knife anymore. And then, okay, like, I sharpen them. And then they're like, they're very happy. So I'm bringing the, their memory and like, be, able to use, be able to take this history and memory to like next generation to somebody. Like, I love doing that. And then that really make me feel like um, I'm part of a community. Uh, the community, the being community, is really important things to me. Because I moved here uh, 13, years, 13 years ago when I was 18. So I didn't, I didn't speak any English. I didn't know anybody. So I was nobody here. I couldn't even communicate with like, anybody. And then this town, the Portland, the people here really gave me special feeling. And really make me reason like why I want to be here. So I'm talking about, uh, I want to be here. And when, uh, right before I start my own business, I was thinking, so I have a great friend and my great friend, the family of my great friend treated me really well. And then I thought about like what I can do for them and then expand of this whole, my friends or this, um, yeah, friends and all circle I'm in, like what I can do, what I can give it back to them. And then I was like, well, I sharpen a knife. <laughs> like I grew up doing this. And then, so I started sharpening. I mean, I've been sharpening knife a long time, but I, needed, I didn't know this can be business. Like I started as a hobby. And then uh, I was sharpening knife for fun. People kept bringing me knife. <laughs> and then I was like, dude, like, I have my another job. I used to work at food card. And then I was sharpening knife for food card and then friends knife. And then friends told their friends about my knife sharpening. And then I was still a food card sharpening knife and cooking. And I was like, whoa, hold on. Like, I have way too many knives to do my job. <laughs> like, you're gonna stop. And then it's like, hey, how much do you charge? And it's like, no, I'm not, this is my hobby. And they're like, oh, great. This is, and then it's like, oh, you should charge. This is job. It's like, really? <laughs> this is job? Oh, well, I didn't know this is a job. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm still like, you know, kind of like, I didn't know, like, this, is that okay things? But, my friend really, uh, my family really pushed my shoulders and then they helped me a lot. And then, so, you know, this became my business. And then since I have, I'm doing this, just like, uh, doing what I can do, I was thinking about, I thought about how I can involve this community and like people. And then 
you know, just like give it back to these like people who gave me reason to be here. And then, so when I talk, I mean, think about business, like I mean, I, mean, I own this business, so I'm like a you know, business owner. Uh, my goal, like, what I want to do is uh, building communities and like, supporting each other, helping people. That's what I like to do. I mean, you know, I'm still charging them. I'm still making money. But mostly, honestly, like, if somebody come to me and it's like, hey, this is really like special knife to me. I don't have money. Please shop. And it's like, dude, I've, I'm like, I'd pay, I mean, I'd shop for that. I'd totally shop on that. If somebody really come to like, this is really important thing, like special things, please shop them. I'd shop on it. Because I like to like, appreciate how people uh, appreciate those like knife or like the memory um, stuff. So that's like I can give it to them. And then remember you know, the involving community or try to do something community. Uh, I mean I kinda you know, I'm kinda simple guy. So I don't like to make things like discount. I love party. <laughs> like I'm party guy. <laughs> So like doing these things, like, you know, like this we are doing, it's party to me. So like how I can uh, involve party and then help each other and then building our circle and then connecting each other and then uh, meeting people is really important things to me too because I came here uh, knowing like anybody. I seriously have no idea who they are, didn't speak. But I don't get lonely anymore. That, I mean, I, I don't know, like, you know, is there anybody from different company, I mean, different country? Okay, where are you from? Germany, Germany. okay. Did you move here by yourself? No, I'm just visiting. Oh, just visit, okay. <laughs> How long are you visiting? Uh, three weeks. Three weeks, awesome, yeah. Are you having a good time? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. How about you? Oh, Brazil. Awesome. Wait, how long are you visiting? Uh, a month. La Portland? Great. That's awesome. I'm glad you're having a good time. Yeah, but like that, like, I mean, I move here, like, seriously, like, the loneliness is harsh. Loneliness is really harsh things. Like, I can't, it's like, especially like you don't speak in, any language, I can't connect with anybody. Loneliness was really hard for me. But, but Portland, like Portland really gave me families and people really gave me a family. So this like the reason I do this business is like my bring it back to communities, and then I like to be like, connected with people. This is the way I connect with people. And then, that's why I like sharp knives. That. And, well, I didn't have like, you know, plan to like, talk about stuff, <laughs> but I did get nervous, and then, so I kind of lost it. <laughs> uh, but like, uh, does anybody have a question? <laughs> yes. Huh? And I want to thank you for speaking to us in, in, a, in Hold a, on. a second language. It's, sorry, it's getting hot. <laughs> I was going to do this, man. I was stuff cutting it. But I totally <laughs> forgot to pick up. It's like, may I do speech? Like, I was like, when I, they asked me to give speech, I'm like, oh, I got to wear a turtleneck. <laughs> I have to do that. I'm like, I have to wear a turtleneck. So, uh, Oh, great. That's what I was going for. <laughs> thank you. That made my night. Great. Yes, sorry. So, uh, th thank you for speaking to us in a second language. Uh -huh. I think most of us only speak one. And so, you were speaking in Japanese. It wouldn't uh -huh. work for us at all. So, <laughs> um, how often do you cut yourself? 
Oh, a lot. I mean, okay, <laughs> I used to car a lot. So I could like, uh, you know, I believe you car more, you learn what you've done. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I've done this because uh, this is what I've done. That's why I cut my finger. So let's not gonna do this thing. Uh, I'd say big things, don't drink a lot and use sharp knife. <laughs> I definitely have done that. And uh, especially like, I mean, I mean, I mean sharp knife, okay. Using sharp knife is kind of great. It's like you cut it, you heal really fast. But it does go through like that. So yeah, but I do cut, I mean, I did cut a lot, but it's great feeling. <laughs> because like, oh, great. This is like how sharp my knife is. I'm sorry, let me give you that. So I have like, uh, I love the, sometimes my client come to me and then just like, you know, give me knife and it's like, please don't, please don't like, you know, sharpen, like too sharp. <laughs> I was like, hold on. <laughs> what I mean too sharp? <laughs> like sharp knife is the best. Like, I'm shopping, they was like, no, I'm scared. <laughs> but it's really hard to not to. So I do sometimes. I mean, it's like really fun to shop a good knife. And then someone's like, oh, please don't shop in like, shop in two shops. Like, dude, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta do this. It's really good knife. It should be shopping. So I do that, so it's really fun. Yeah, yes. Okay, so. I got into cooking, mm -hmm. and now I love cooking. Yes. So I bought it by myself. Uh huh. Great. Uh huh. And it's a great knife. Uh huh. So now I've gone to the next step of sharpening. Myself. Yes. Uh huh. So the questions I have are: I bought one of those, uh, the three-in-one whetstone. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not great, but mm -hmm. it's good for starting. Mm hmm. Right? Mm hmm. Um, coarse, medium, fine. Uh huh. So I guess my, the thing I struggle with the most is the angle. Yes. So what I do is, uh, so push on the pole, yeah. push on the pole. Okay. So if you, so that's angle. So, okay, if you just like push, so it's gonna be just like good way, I mean, good to cut one direction. So is there a santok knife or a sashimi knife? Do you know what kind of knife you use? Uh, okay, so santok knife. Yeah, so knife, so, I do also customize edge, depending on what kind of knife it is, like sashimi knife, santuk knife, vegetable knife, all the kind of knife. So they have all different angle. Um, so it's like santuk knife, yeah. right? So, I was told that was a good Yeah, starter. santuk knife is great, uh, great to start. So push on the pole, push on the pole. And then I'll say this part, uh, you probably wanna go a little bit like, Pushing, mm -hmm. you're sharpening on the push mm -hmm. the pole? Yeah, push on the pole. And then do, are you doing the entire length of the edge? Uh -huh. the, mm -hmm. Not just back and forth on one section of the knife? No. Uh, no, no, no. It's like, it's go like, you go like, you know, each section is different angle. It should be different angle. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this part is, it can be like chop, like this, right? Yeah. This part is mostly pole. So like, you have to like, uh, customize, uh, or just like, the way you like to use, you can like customize like each part of it. That's like Santok knife can do. <laughs> yeah, so that's really fun to, uh, you know, like, okay, when I touch like knives, or like, so I go lots of restaurants to shop a knife. When I touch like chef's knife, I can tell how they use knife. Like knives can tell their quality or um, the quality of restaurant the quality of chefs a lot. Uh, I'm not gonna tell names, I'm gonna say names. <laughs> but there are restaurants uh, like people knows, but knife quality or how they treat knife is just like, <laughs> not good, names like, whoa, you are such a big name, but I'm not gonna come here. <laughs> but there, it's like, you know, also there was like a restaurant in town. It's like small, small business, but they, like all chef, treat knife, uh, treat knife so well. And like, 
constantly keep calling me. So, like, when I sharpen knife, uh, so my, it depends on how much knife can get beat up. But usually, like, um, for home knife, probably can go like six months. It depends on how uh, people maintenance knives. But it can go like, you know, six months on that. But some like heavy duty knife, one, three months, one, like four months. But some small business, uh, my client, they're like constantly just like, hey, I want you to come back in two months. Just like, whoa, you are just like some like divey bro. But you really care about your quality of knife. Mm -hmm. That means their quality of their service and like food. So yeah, knife can tell um, about restaurant or like personality a lot. I like that. Oh, are you, can I show how you sharpen? Do we have time for that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, we do. All right. Huh. Okay. Who has knife? I'll sharpen somebody's knife. Okay. Okay. Wait, okay, he got it. He got it. He got it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm. Does it have a water bottle? I need somebody's water. Okay. So. Uh, okay. So this knife. When I do like sharpening knife first. Uh, I'm gonna clean up like you know the blade. Uh, because like you know, some blade here you cut like uh, meat, cheese, or greasy things, it's like up here. So it needs like it's, it's nice to clean up. I mean this is a good way to maintain still. Uh, when you chop like uh, cut meat, avocado, something greasy, you should wash. And then uh, it's always nice to just like hone it and then like take grease off. That's a really great way to maintain us. If you do it, yeah, let's do it. I can do this. Okay. Sweet, I wasn't expecting that I'm gonna do this. Okay, the first How long do you have this knife? About a year. About a year, okay. It's a good knife. I do have like a um, Kasha knife, so they do hold the metal really well. So I'm gonna do grinding first. So it's pretty good shape. But I'm gonna do a little bit grinding. Just like smaller, I'm gonna take smaller amount of metal from knives. So it's, I'm grinding it. I don't know, I don't know how much like entertaining sharpening knife is. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah. is it? Okay, great. <laughs> great. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I say like, so your knife was a little bit round, so I just take it and then became like this sharp now. Okay, and shape this pointy shape. And then, I'm gonna use this Binshu knife. Uh, so I also like to you know, say like uh, Western, Western. Like I you know, go through like Western, I look at Western, it, I can just like lose myself about Western. 
there are so many great Western, and then some of Western is from like ancient, ancient time, from like mine from Japan. I mean, some of Western, like $5,000, or like it can go like way, way high. I mean, I don't even know, like, what is a $5,000 Western is like? <laughs> but I'm more like, you know, it's like you have to choose it, like, what you are doing. Someone's go like, you know, medium level, or like really fine level. So it's like, it's really fun to see like, this is a Jabal stone too. So this is like a Binshu stone. I'm going to use Binshu stone. Uh, it's 800,000 really grain. Give you like good, good like edge, like deep edge on it. If you go uh, like thousand, mm -hmm. so uh, two hundred. So it's like you know, really close ones, like two hundred to like three, uh, like three thousand, like half hours to use it. And then if you're going to like fine, like four thousand, six thousand, eight thousand, twelve thousand, uh, don't do it. Like when you use it, just like splash waters. It, because like you know those high grade of stones are clay pretty much. If you soak like too long, uh, it breaks really easy. And like I mean, especially like you know those like high grade stones, like it's not much more pushing. It's more like touching bread on stone. So yeah, it's like yeah. So if you have like you know lower grade of number. Soak it half hour. Higher, so don't soak it, like you know, the spray, the spray. Okay, and then this is the outer stone. So, I don't know, two thousand, I mean, thousand to three thousand, but I think this stone is more like two thousand, three thousand, they're really fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the cool thing about sharpening knife too, you, I, uh, you really have to be like on top of your sense, watching, touching, and hearing. You really need to hear like the what sound they are making. And then also like the, you got to watch stone and metals. That's really cool, like you know, that, that's communication. The, I call like knife sharpening is waking up knife. So some knife, like great knife, like losing sharpness, uh, but some good knife, they can do so much. Their sharpness is like here, but it's staying like here. So you, I'm just like waking them up and then talking to them. And then if you do like, you know, the, what you are supposed to do to knife, they will, uh, they will talk to you, they will talk to you. Like they really show, like okay, this is why I can do things. So it's more like you really have to communicate with metal and stones. I just give them like uh, like two thousand, three thousand. Then I'm going to give them uh, six thousand. So six thousand, they're more like you know mirror polishing. So this is one of my fun part. Like 
this is still like you know, what I do at the job, but like mirror polishing is so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> when like I sharpen, like I do mirror polishing, when I see like you no know, braid with like lights, it's reflected. Like you can really like uh, use as mirror. I mean, this much, yeah. this like much time <laughs> mirror. I don't know you want to use that mirror, but it's really fun. Yes, go ahead. Can you, um, if you're sharing a knife with someone at home, say, and one person is left-handed and one person is right-handed, uh -huh. is that bad? Oh, it's an, I mean, n there's a knife for, like, knife for left-hand person, a knife for right-hand person. <coughs> so it's not bad to me. I mean, yeah, it's like all knife is different, and then somebody's hand is different, too. So if you are, like, left-hand, then you have, like, you should get knife for your hand, like a personal knife as left handers. So it's not bad at all. I'm making new ones. So that's kind of cool, um, sharpen knife too. I can tell knife I sharpen or not. So when I see like, you know, somebody bring a knife, when I see the blade on the edge, I can tell like, oh, I sharpened this before. And then I can tell it's like, oh, this is the like, grinded by machine too. So I really like it. It's kind of marking, <laughs> marking on my knife. It's really fun things to do. Hmm. So does the holder get it high enough? You're, you're putting it in the holder so it's a little higher so you can work on the stone better? Or why not just have the stone on the, on the, on the cloth? Oh, this thing? Yeah. yeah. It. So it's like, you know, it's, it gets lift, yeah, it's like a lift there. Okay. It's easier. So I just give them like, you know, 6,000. And then I'm going to give them 8,000 here. Okay, so I just give it 8,000, and then after 8,000, I'm going to clean up the blade. So I have this like leather strap with like, uh, mm -hmm. and then I have like this like colonium compound on it. So it just like does like, mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, I'm just pouring it, so it doesn't cut through. It just, I'm just cleaning up metals. <laughs> I'm gonna this, right? Here you go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so this is a great knife though. Mm -hmm. Like it's fantastic knife. And then I say like you know, good knife is also I say metals, but also handle. Handle is really a big part of good knives. So when you see like you know, cheap knife, uh, so this kind of stuff. 
it's really easy to sharpen because like this handle is like made, this knife is made to be sharpened by hand. So the person or like, you know, the factory or the company who make, um, make knife uh, consider to be sharpened at hand. And then when you see like cheap knife, they are not uh, made to be sharpened by hand. So those factory just uh, kind of like more like, oh, it's got dull, throw away. So uh, handle is really big part of like good knife too. You know. Hey, thank you so much to me. Yeah, I enjoy sharpening your knife. Yeah, I like sharpening good knives. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, I grew up doing this. Uh, so, uh, man, four or five. So I grew up countryside of Japan. I mean, it's really countryside, and I'm second son. So I got really into magic and gathering. I got to make money to buy magic and gathering. <laughs> so I'm like, how am I make money? So I started sharpening. Uh, my family is like a uh, gardening tool. So I do sharpen gardening tool, an axe, uh, beside a knife tool. But I start sharpening like gardening tool. Uh, they're like, you know, tools for money to buy magic and gathering. <laughs> and then I guess I was good at it. So just like, just kept doing it and it was fun. And then my uncle, he's licensed tuna butcher in uh, this like a uh, fisherman market. So may you, have you seen like any like tuna butcher things in Japan, like they, what they do? They have like this like pretty much like samurai sword, like long blade. You need to have like a uh, weapon license to carry around. So he does that and then he does maintenance. So watching him and then, you know, I went to sharpening place uh, with him. I thought it's so cool. And then I just started like, kind of copying what they're doing and then start hanging out like this like knife sharpening place in Japan and then start copying it. And then I thought knife is such a badass thing to do. <laughs> it's like, it's really cool. It's like, whoa, cool knife, cool axe. I'm gonna do this. And then just kind of getting more and more, start doing it. Yeah, that's, that's how I started. Is that okay? Do that answer? Awesome. Uh, yes? A question on, on bigger knives, like uh, chukobochos and like larger cleavers and those types of things that uh -huh. weigh more than a pound. Yeah, it's a pound. Uh -huh. yeah, so, so, it's big, uh, so it's a cleaver. Yeah. So it's a big, also, you know, depending on like how thick but the bread. Very fine cleavers. Like yeah, fine pound. cleaver. Yeah. Okay, those are more, so, it's like fine cleavers, it's more thin. Uh, I do change like angle. So this sound of knife, I get more like, you know, a little bit like six days. Yeah. Like six days, like 60 to like seven days. Because you use knife like this, right? right? But cleaver, cleaver, you gotta chop it. Yeah. So I give them like more like 50, okay. 50 or 40. So I give them like different angle. Right. But and yes. Do you take the stone to them? Yes, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then like sometimes you see like those like fake one. Mm -hmm. I use uh, that axe, like the mm -hmm. style to sharpen axe. Right. So I also sharpen axe professionally. So axe sharpening is like, um, it's like an edge. I still give it edge and the angle. Uh, it's the same thing because it's a like chopper. It's more than a it's like chopping it. And I use like this the way I shop an axe. Okay, cool. Yes. Mm. Uh, I just had a, uh, I wanted to know what you think about uh, ceramic knives and then. Ceramic knife, great. And then, sorry. And just the comparison to. Uh, okay, I'll be honest. I know this is a customer, okay. I, I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> uh, so ceramic knife, you cannot use stones. You have to use diamond pile, right? So there's a reason why uh, the 
the knife. People say like, well, you know, chef or like, you know, samurai sword, uh, sharpener used with stone. Because they can be like, so thin. Like, you can be really, really sharp. But ceramic knives only uh, can sharpen by di diamond file, but it's never be going to like 12,000 fine. Okay, it's always just like stay right there. But they are hard, so it does keep sharpness. But it's an honest reason. I just, actually, I just sharpened ceramic knives uh, last night. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> just. But apart from just, just the sharpening part, uh, what about actual use between ceramic and metals? I know you obviously mm -hmm. prefer metals. Yeah. Uh, but do you, do you have any particular reason why you prefer metal or why you would think anyone would prefer metal knife over ceramic? Uh, so, let's say, uh, it just doesn't sound good. I really <laughs> like, like you know, the sound of stone, touching stone and dealing stone. And then like, those like, you know, the feeling or just like having good time to sharpen that. Ceramic knife, I'm just not into it. <laughs> I'm not simple, I'm a simple guy. So it's like, all right, I, this is job, sure. Like I've sharpened ceramic knife, but that, I really like using wet stones. And those knives not be able to sharpen with wet stone. So I still do it, but I don't really recommend it. <laughs> Just like, I like there was like metals and then people make it. Good knife, people like think about how to make this good metals. Like think about their like science and like effort onto this thing. It's gorgeous. I, I think it's beautiful. I mean, I see knife as art. Like, it's beautiful art. And it's cool art, like, lasts forever. Like, you did, like, you know, treat them really well. You can take this knife to your son, next generation, best friend, or somebody you really care about. That's metal can do. Like, I love that. Like, I really like this part about metals. So I'm just like, doesn't miss being picky, I guess. But I like it. I, I prefer metals. Yes? Are most of your clients restaurants or chefs? Uh, I do have, uh, okay. I do have weapon collectors. Uh, somebody, like, uh, somebody who really into weapons. Like samurai sword, uh, the weapons. Uh, I'd say like it's the most interesting things I sharpen was. It's crow. Like Wolverine crow. <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, it's like gloves and then has like this like, it breast knuckle. And then has like this like crow into it. Like it's all sold into it. And then uh, I was like, uh, you know, this like you bought this probably eBay or some like <laughs> convenience store from the grass case. <laughs> but this person was so proud and so happy to show me just like, check this out, I have a Wolverine crow. It's like, okay, I shop brand. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but that was really tough because, <laughs> so this side is right. Medium side, you, I can't, I mean, because also like this like crow thing wasn't like wasn't meant to be used. So the <laughs> bread was like this thick. Like a thick. I have to just grind it down, grind down. I say, I mean I told you guys I don't use machine, but that was the only time I have to. <laughs> just like, grind it down this much. And then the inside and then like the middle part, machine can't get into it. So I have to use all hand. Yeah, that was most interesting thing and like ridiculous things I sharpened. But it's actually like, you know, those like uh, sharpening thing, uh, some chef or some, it's all, okay. Some chef has really, really good knife. Like I've been sharpened this like, uh, from this chef from like really well-known restaurant 
those like, you know, the knife set, he has a uh, probably I shot on like eight or seven. Seriously, it was like more than seven thousand, eight thousand dollar worth of knives. The how they made like metals and the handles. My hand was shake. Like mm -hmm. I was like sh my hand was shaking like when I was sharpening it. And then as soon as I was done, I have to go. <laughs> I really like, I was like, hey, here's the receipt, I have to go. <laughs> because I was really scared. But he liked this. But that that's what uh, that's why I'm like this. I really like doing this. Like when I need like this great knife, it's awesome. It's so much fun. Like here's like a you know, knife, here's these weird things. You think I can, they think I can sharpen, but let's do it. Like a challenge. <laughs> I like doing that. Yes? Which of the knives that you own means the most to you and why? Uh, so this is, so this knife. Uh, I used to work a uh, food cart downtown uh, called Samurai Bento, mm -hmm. the, uh, Southwest 9th and 10th. So this place was run by this like Japanese old Japanese couple, and then uh, they hire me because they need to speak uh, English and Japanese, and then I just became like really into this job, and then like oh, I worked there like five or six years, and then he got uh, brain cancer, so just like uh, pretty much they became my grandparents. So they really care about me. They're like really hard on me. But also like, you know, they became like my Japanese family there. And then he was going to through whole chemotherapies. And then he have to go back to Japan. Because, uh, so once ago bring, I mean, there was no way he can be like, you know, heal. So does he need to go back to spend the rest of his life in Japan? He only spent there probably like a few weeks. He passed away. And then before he is gone, uh, he gave me this knife. I mean, it's really beat up, but I spent a lot of time with this knife. This knife is really mean to me. And then, yeah, this knife. And also, like, I'm a knife collector as well. So I have like, my favorite knife company um, I really like. Uh, I'm just gonna say, uh, so it's called Boulder Colorado Western. So a lot of the good knife company used to make like, say like, make their own knife, you know, make their own metals. Back knife, the vintage back knife, amazing. They make really good metals. I mean, they used to. They used to make really good metals, handmade, hand forged, um, like that. So Boulder Colorado was the same way. It's made in Boulder, Colorado. Handmade, hand forged, great metal. But it got by, uh, sold by a big company and then make different company, I mean, different country and they're not same quality anymore. But those like vintage, good night, when you find it, you just like, I mean, we have phone nowadays. You can just like, Google it and then like, why this knife is. <laughs> you can find really good knife around them. Yeah, so that's an knife on that. Yes? Um, so you say that there's some uh, restaurants around town where you can, you really like the restaurant uh -huh. because you really like how they, how they treat their knives. Uh -huh. Do you have some that you could, you could say that you really like? Uh, the name? Yeah, yeah. If okay. Like, not, the, not the ones you don't Awesome, uh, no, okay, great. Uh, <laughs> People's Pig. Those guys are awesome. They do care about that. Their food is fantastic. You just go. If you like meat or barbecue, people's pig is awesome. They really care about knife. Uh, they treat knife really well. Uh, I like them a lot. Langban, the Thai pop-up restaurant in party. Man, their knives. <sighs> oh, anybody who is like knife nerd or kitchen knife nerd. Go my Instagram. <laughs> I have a picture of it. It's just like mind blowing. So they're great. Uh, high Water Mark Lounge. 
in the MLK, it's like it's such a divey bird, <laughs> but they do really well. Like, I love how they trade knife and how they're always like, calling me like, care about knives. Uh, Coquin, that Coquin, the 69th Belmont, fantastic. Food is fantastic, and then the Chef Katie, awesome. Uh, Maya from uh, May, that pop up, the reason why she's good, she does care about knife. Fantastic job, she does the food quality, she's great. Um, that's what I'm to think of, yeah. Awesome. Yes? How did you choose to move to Portland? Oh, uh, so I want to go South Dakota or Wyoming. <laughs> I liked, uh, so I grew up, I thought Easy Rider was so cool. <laughs> like I want to be Easy Rider and then like, okay, so my dream was actually, uh, when I was in Japan growing up, uh, I really want to meet the daughter of Native American chief, <laughs> and then meet her, and then prove like I'm the best of this tribe, <laughs> and then want to marry them. I mean, marry her. So, and then that was my uh, dream. So I was like, well, South Dakota is the tribe. <laughs> and then Wyoming. Uh, was like, well, Wyoming is really cool. I love those, like, you know, nature, or like that, and the cowboy cultures, or like a motorcycle. I was like, oh, hey, yeah, let's like, go there. And then, like, a few months before that's happening, I felt so wrong. I felt really weird, weird feeling about moving to those two places. <laughs> and then I look at a map of US, and then uh, I saw a portal on Oregon. And I was like, what is Portland, Oregon? Like, I never heard Portland, Oregon. What is about this? All right, let's do it. <laughs> so I did it. But it takes so much effort to move here. Uh, my family is wrong, history family, of the history of Japan. So I'm second son, as the history, that I'm like first generation mover from different country. I have to run, I mean, not have to, but I run away from home like six times. And every time I got busted by police and they got sent it to home. And then just like, okay, my, my, my family is like, okay, don't do that. <laughs> it's like, I got it, what you wanna do? Okay, let's talk about it. And then finally they like set table with me. And then, no, I gotta be able to move here. Uh, yeah, so it's random. I didn't really choose Portland. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> here, I move here. Yeah, oh, definitely. That's my, like, the best random decision I ever made. <laughs> like, the best and favorite random decision. Yeah, and then, like, knife, somehow, like, start doing knife sharpening. That's such a random, like, all right, that's cool. I'm going to do this. Uh, does anyone have any more questions? Yes? It sounds like you go to clients a lot. Do people bring knives to you also? Yes, I do. So I do, uh, it's, you know, I'm an easy going guy, so it's like, hey, like, come, can you pick up knife? I can't pick up. Like, I come to you. I come to pick up knife, drop off, or I come to, like, your side. I make mean, I'm sharp a knife inside. So anything like easy for you, easy for me. That's how I run business. Like I come meet you, I am happy to meet meet people who have me. And then also like I like I'm ha always happy to show like and teach like how to sharpen knives. And then going to like restaurant too. So I really enjoy going to place and then picking up, dropping off. I really enjoy it. And also like I do go sharp a knife outside of town. Man, that's so much fun. I love that. I go like sharp a knife in Cannon Beach or Kamas. That's like, I love business trip. I call it business trip. <laughs> but it's kind of like, 
All right, let's go sharp knife and after, oh, let's go party. Let's go just like hang out. So it's always best time. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't. I forgot to talk about this. So to maintenance, uh, if you have high uh, carbon knife, high carbon knife, it's really nice to use oil. Uh, so I use this like honing oil. Uh, it's it's for uh, Alcanda stone or like you no know, stone need oil. Uh, no western like no water stone. It's like some Alcanda stone or some oil need oil. But they are also really good uh, take care of metals. And also they are good for wood too. If you have like a wood handle, use those like oils. And then that's like rub it up. And food step, yes. They are 100% natural. So it's, I highly recommend to use this. I forgot to say that. <laughs> I often sharpen chisels and, and flatten the stone. Do you flatten the stones often? Or yes, I do. You do. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Some of them have a lot of both of them, but I guess those, oh, are, those are the ones you do. Yeah, definitely. So those guys, uh, I'm getting the point. I'm going to switch to 100% natural stone. It's natural stone can do so much better than those like a handmade stone. So I'm going to switch stone. So I'm just going to beat and share it. And then it's like once they are done, it's done. And then I'm going to switch all my stone to like, like natural mining stone. Yeah, so that's why I'm like not much like, you know, the honing it, huh? Yes? Uh, what do you think of the, uh, the tools that kind of guide the angle that hold the stone? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, so I say like, you know, every knife have personality or different. So I don't think like every knife can be just this, like there's no like, this knife is set. Uh, you really have to uh, touch it. That touch it like, you know, knowing the angle. So is that like adaptable or like what? I, I don't have one, I just, I've seen them before. Uh, I mean, if it's work for your knife, I don't, I'm not gonna say like it's work for every knife. It's work for some knife. <laughs> but if you have some knife, it might be ruined. Some knife is like really particular angle. You really have to be this angle. So if you use this like things, you might rotate it. Yeah, rotate it. But it, yeah, it's hang out with your knife. <laughs> no, knowing about knife is really good things to do. And you would have a question? Yes. Um, uh, so with the steel, mm -hmm. Okay, so those steel, it's for maintenance. I call it more like you know, maintenance. Uh, so it's not sharpening, it's maintenance knife, cleaning a uh, blade, it's a great way to use it. It's, I highly recommend use this. So like, before you cut it, just go like, once, it's really clean a blade. And then uh, after cut, like meat, uh, cheese, something have the grease. I ha after cut, after I like, you know, cut, after use, wash it, and then just like do this. Like you know, it's like you know, the, the bread. It really cleaned up like bread. Take grease off. So I highly um, recommend to use that. And then, so this is the honing steel. They have ceramic uh, honing steel and diamond file honing steel. Diamond file honing steel is really aggressive material. So if you don't have the control, uh, like how much you are taking or how much you are putting like, uh, your power onto it, I don't really recommend that. Like this kind of honing steel, it's the best. Like I recommend you, you know, use this. Again? Okay. Hey, thank you so much for having I'm <laughs> Hey, thank you so much. I'm All right, um, we were
return August 9th with Kelly Roy, uh, author and founder of ADX and Portland Made with her talk, The Power of Portland Made. Um, in 2015, after five years of running ADX, uh, she decided to write a book about Portland's maker movement because uh, the people, their businesses, and their products, and the movement itself inspired her. What is the ma maker movement, you ask? It is the legions of artisans and craftspeople and entrepreneurs and doers who are reinventing and reshaping artisanal manufacturing one handmade product at a time. It is the people who are starting businesses, developing products, honing their skills, and offering support and sharing tools and knowledge with each other. So it should be a good one. Let's have another round of applause for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. man. Thank you. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah.